Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it's time to have a look at the New Year sale that is here on the Gaijin store. As promised, there is a bunch of stuff which is 50% off and individual vehicle packs which are 50% uh, off, so therefore you're able to pick them up and, well, I suppose they'll be really nice for grinding and all of that wonderful stuff depending on what you go for. Now, in this video we're going to go through each of the packs, uh, the cost is going to be taken into account, and basically I'm going to be giving giving my opinion on the packs themselves, which ones to pick up, which ones not to pick up, all of that wonderful stuff. Before we get started, there is another piece of news as well. Tank Football is back. Tank Football is back, and if you didn't play it the first time, I highly recommend giving it a go this time. It's an incredibly fun little game mode, and uh, fortunately there is uh, nothing on offer here, so there aren't any like prizes or anything like that, at least for the Tank Football stuff, but just the general physics and the way it all works is just incredibly fun and it's nice to see that uh, we can enjoy it once again over this Christmas period. There is also some New Year tournaments that are going on which are actually being run by specific squadrons in the game in affiliation with Gaijin themselves through the War Thunder Esports partner program. You have the Pro 100 Cup AB and also the Cringe Cup RB. Uh, so these uh, these tournaments are going to be around. The prize pool is going to be 400,000 Golden Eagles overall, and then you also have the standard, uh, the standard tournaments as well. So if you are interested in getting into some competitive play, it might be worth having a look at this page uh, to see if anything wets your whistle. But for me, the tank football is enough. It is always fun to be able to play tank football, and hopefully in the future it will be become something that we'll be able to access in the game readily, so therefore we can run some tournaments of our own around it. Now, uh, going back to the New Year's sale, as usual, when it comes to the New Year's sale, I have made a spreadsheet when it comes to all the pricing and everything like that, so there will be a link in the description for this uh, for this spreadsheet, but basically it's just uh, the standard one that you normally see. You know, I've split each of the packs into its own relevant little bits, splitting up all of the uh, different prices. The only thing that is different this time is uh, when it comes to the overall cost, I've split it up by amount so dollars instead of vehicles themselves because there are so many things on offer this time uh, i think this is actually the largest sale um, that they've had when it comes to just in terms of vehicles and in terms of packs for quite a long time normally it's only around about this much or maybe even a bit less but this time you can see that there are additional packs as well so there's a lot of stuff on offer here and um, they range from seven dollars fifty to thirty dollars a pack and i've made sure to put them all in this um all in this uh, spreadsheet. The main takeaways from this is uh, pretty much, so when it comes to $7.50 packs, which is just the Japanese specific campaign pack, uh, you basically get the vehicle and the campaign for free, um, the PT and also the GE pay for themselves, so it's always good to pick up this pack. Uh, the $10 pack, um, the vehicle is 78 cents overall, which is incredibly cheap. And then the $15 pack, the vehicle is $2.78, once you take away the GE and the PT, the $20 packs are the ones which are the least cost efficient, uh, so these would be stuff like the uh, the T29 and I believe the IS-6 as well, uh, valued at $20. The $25 one isn't too bad with the cost of the vehicle being $6.18, and then the $30 pack, which is basically just the Prince Eugen, the vehicle being $5.57. So uh, we've used the constants uh, from the uh, from the Gaijin store itself, uh, so you know, everything is in USD as well take that into account but as I said if you want access to this there will be a link in the description of the video so you can have a look for yourself at this stuff now let's go through each of the packs let's go through uh, stuff that I would personally buy and then uh, you know leave it to you guys uh, to decide what you want to go on just remember uh, premium time is always much better than buying individual premium vehicles just because of the fact that it benefits all of your vehicles instead of just specific ones. So the first one that is on offer is the Japanese Pacific Campaign. Now this Pacific Campaign co 
comes with the A6M5 Co. Uh, premium account for 15 days, and then also 850 uh, GE and uh, the Japanese Pacific campaign. If you've never played the Pacific campaigns, they are actually wonderful. At one point, I will play them through them on a stream, but the Pacific campaigns are narrated by Stephen Fry, of all people, uh, which is very <laughs> surprising, at least to me. And uh, basically, you get a really nice story of different events. You get to play some single-player missions. You get some SL out of it. You get a bit of RP out of it, all of this stuff. But generally, it's just nice to play the uh, little single-player areas of War Thunder, and I wish they would expand it at some point. And I feel like... Um the way to support those ideas is by buying this pack. Unfortunately, the USA pack doesn't seem to be on offer, or at least it's not in the list, uh, which is kind of weird. Um, but the A6M5 uh, Co. one, the Japanese Pacific pack is. And as I said, if you pick up this pack, you basically get this and also this for free, um, because the pack gets paid for by itself by the premium account and the GE that you get out of it. Uh, so you get some nice added bonuses, and the A6M5 Co. is an incredibly good vehicle. You know, if you want to grind through Japan, it's got really nice uh, rewards on it. It's uh, got really nice maneuverability, great climb rates. Um, it's got an okay dive speed. The main issue it has is its guns aren't the best, and also, uh, you can get extended on by a lot of fighters if they know how to fight you, and um, that can be a bit annoying. The secondary uses of it as well, outside of Aerialistic, aren't exactly great, uh, but generally it is a really nice vehicle in Aerialistic and also Air Arcade. So, yeah, and as I said, you literally get it for free, so <laughs> it's kind of a, kind of a nice uh, little addition. The next one is the Dora pack, of course the Focker Wolf 190D13. This one seems to go on offer at least once a year, and the Dora used to be a monster. It used to be a ridiculous aircraft to fight. Nowadays, not so much. The Dora used to be a monster when uh, there wasn't as many super props in the game, there wasn't as many 6.3, 6.0, 6.7 machines, but now with the D13 going down in BR, I believe it's at 5.7 right now, it just shows how much it's been struggling. Um, it does have access to some really good armament. It still climbs incredibly well. The main issue with the Dora is being able to get the guns on the targets because of the fact that the tail is not always as responsive as other fighters that you fight. It is still a very good vehicle. Uh, don't get me wrong. It is still a vehicle that can do incredibly well in the game, basically because of the fact that it has a uh, very good uh, high altitude performance. I just think it is overshadowed by a lot more vehicles nowadays than it used to be. It is a vehicle that you can use to be able to, you know, grind through a lot of the German tech tree. I think the TAR 154 is a better bet though. And uh, the Dora doesn't have too much uses when it comes to ground realistic as well, because the secondary armaments that it gets isn't the best. There's a lot of better options when it comes to that tier for the Germans, the B6R3, for example, or the Do 335s. So for me, it's it's an okay pickup. It's not the best in the world. Um, I feel very confident facing Doras uh, when I'm when I'm playing, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of different vehicles, just because of the fact that all they have is the dive and extend, dive and extend, dive and extend, and it's really easy to play around that if you're in uh, really any other vehicle. The next one is the Mustang, so the P51D20 Mustang. Um, this is once again fifteen dollars, and the P51D20 is a pretty nice pickup. The reason for this is because it doesn't just double as a fighter; it is also, you know, a cast aircraft. It does get access to some pretty nice secondary armaments, and those uh, 650 cals are incredibly good to use, especially with the APIT round. Um, the only issue that the Mustang has is that its rate of climb isn't the best and if you get caught at low energy by somebody or if they're at a higher energy advantage than you, it's very hard to do anything about it because once you get below certain speeds with the Mustang, it just becomes a brick. It's normally below about like 350, you know, 400. It doesn't fly very well and the elevator just doesn't really respond. So you just get picked off and in order to get over that, you know, speed and get back in the fight, it's not always the easiest thing to do with uh, the Mustang. So that's your only real problem if you get caught at a low energy state if you don't if you know how to manage your energy and you know how to you know 
maybe climb just that extra one or two minutes extra in a battle in a realistic you can do really well in this thing you know if you can manage your energy state and make it a little bit higher than it uh, usually is it's a really fun plane to fly um especially in squads it's the p51s are some of my most flown aircraft in the game and generally uh, we would two or three man them and you would be able to use that you know to be able to take over games it was always a fun experience to do it in the mustang and hopefully uh, in the future a lot of people can have a bit of fun with it too and with the 15 dollar packs as i said before uh, basically it's um two dollars 78 for the vehicle uh, so that's the way i see these so you can pick up a mustang or a dora for two dollars 78 that's not too shabby then you got the king tiger coming in at twenty dollars the king tiger the tiger 2 sla which is just a better version of the tech tree tiger 2 it has extra armor on the turret it also has a extra improved engine uh, compared to the tiger 2 h and this thing is still a monster you know a lot of people look down on the Tiger 2 um, basically because they think about oh no you know heat exists and uh, my upper glacis can be penned oh no British Sabre exists so I, I can't do anything against it you know and um, at the same time a lot of people look at the T-34 and go oh no the T-34 exists the heavy tank I can't do anything against it I played the Tiger recently I played the Tiger 2H and the Tiger 105 it was still a breeze to play it was still a very relaxing very enjoyable experience even with the nerf to it that it had before where now it carries ammunition in the turrets it's still a really nice vehicle it's got a great gun on it it does bounce a lot of rounds and all of those vehicles that i just listed you know that throw those rounds at you guess what you can pen them as well in a lot of their areas so yeah, Tiger 2 is always a nice time. Um, I enjoy it quite a lot. You know, I generally enjoy heavy tanks around 5.7 and 6.7, and this one does bolster the 6.7 lineup of the Germans, so you can use it for the events uh, that happen. It also gives you really nice SL and premium bonuses. Overall, the Tiger 2 SLA is an incredibly, incredibly good vehicle and uh, should not be overlooked, no matter what wearaboos tell you. Then we have the T-29, the monster from America, which did go up in BR to 7.0 because it was trouncing on them fools. The uh, T-29 is basically a T-34, which has access to HE filler um, in its rounds. And because of this, on its 105mm, it's able to penetrate a lot, and whenever it penetrates, it does a ton of damage. The T-29 in general is a very fun vehicle to play. I basically been using the t34 and t30 combo um, most recently when it comes to uh, the event and that's because you have good armor you generally survive a shot and also at the same time you know you are able to put out the damage with the uh, gun that you have the only issue the t29 has is that the lineup around it isn't as strong uh, unless you have some of the premiums like the a2d uh, the m46 tiger and so on so that's a bit of an issue but you can still run it in that heavy tank lineup or run it with the six seven light tanks as well the t29 is just a very fun vehicle you know it has a lot of armor on it it has a very good gun it has very good penetration it gets let down a little bit by the reload but you know as long as you manage the vehicle very well uh, that isn't too much of an issue and the m46 the chicken wire express is a pretty fun thing as well you also get some really nice cast options with the t29 if you want to bring them along so overall it's a good package uh it isn't obviously as good as when it was uh six seven but to be honest while playing a lot of six seven for this operation winter event i've um I've been in the brackets of basically 7 to 6 quite a lot, mainly because of that British lineup that got moved up that everybody is still playing. So I would definitely say it's a, it's a worthy pickup um, if you don't have this. Uh, it's uh, very good at dealing with pretty much anything. Um, it's a pretty nice machine to play. And generally, heavy tank premiums, uh, this goes for stuff like the is it the uh, the t95 uh, premium as well generally you're going to take more shots you're going to be more survivable and that means that you will have more time um even if you are a new player 
to uh, to deal deal out damage, and also at the same time, you will get more points uh, from well surviving basically from getting shot. So you'll get more RP and more SL uh, from the vehicles themselves. That's why it's much nicer to play something like the Tiger Two Sla over something like the RU Two Five One, just because of the survivability. Then we have the Wyvern. Uh, so the Wyvern is back for fifteen dollars. Uh, the Wyvern is a machine which has been lowered in BR recently. Um, it's a pretty cool vehicle, you know. It's uh, it's got a lot of nice little uh, quirks to it. Has some really nice um, secondary armaments, meaning that you can run it in ground realistic really well. And in air realistic, if you need something which is just going to go bomb a base and then go back home, you can definitely use it in that way. Uh, I don't think it is an out and out fighter. Um, it can't really play the air superiority role really well. Uh, there are so many uh, vehicles at the BR of the Wyvern for the British, which are so much better than it in the air superiority area. It's just a bit too heavy for that, and even though it has great top speed, getting to that top speed and not burning energy in the turn is not something, you know, that uh, the Wyvern does uh, greatly. You know, it, it, it loses a lot of energy while maneuvering, and also its acceleration, especially its top-end acceleration, isn't the best, uh, so you can get caught out a lot. It does have a contraprop, which is pretty cool and the 420 millimeters are really nice as well but you've got to see this thing as a ground pounder uh, first and then a fighter very much second um, I would say this, uh, when it comes, if you're running like ground realistic, um, this is definitely worth it, um, you know, uh, bringing along this cast plane. If you're looking to passively grind the British tech tree with some kind of uh, machine, you know, turning off your brain and just going to like shoot ground targets and hit bases and stuff, the Wyvern is also worth it. Um, but there are a lot of very good experiences in the British tree um, that I would definitely go for first, um, just because of the fact that um they're they're very fun as superiority fighters uh the next one is the is6 so the is6 is back in business uh, the big old chunky now the is6 came into the game um it was bugged it had extra armor in the turrets and gained a reputation of being a monster of the battlefield that is no longer the case. Uh, the bug is fixed. It got up. It got put up in BR, and now I really don't think it's that good. Um, at 7.3, uh, the IS-6 is tamed by the fact that the Soviets already have a really good 7.7 lineup in the form of the T-54s, the IS, uh, the IS-4M, and at 7.3, you pretty much got this thing, and then the IS-3, which both have the same issue. Uh, they are easily penned by a lot of the rounds which uh, generally you know you find at those BRs. If you get in a full down tier the IS-6 is a monster but most heavy tanks in a full down tier are monsters and because of the fact that not a ton of people are playing 6-3 normally you get a lot of people playing 6-7 and 7-0 this thing will get penned quite easily by a lot of those uh, guns. Or if, you know, they can't pen you, guess what? They'll just barrel you and then move on. I've had a great time in a lot of the Soviet heavies. You know, the IS-3, most recently I got it spaded. It was probably the roughest spade uh, that I've had just because it doesn't really have a backup lineup apart from, like, the BMP-3. Um, the IS-4M I had a great time in. Uh, you know, the KVs are always fun. And I'm sure the IS-6 is a little bit of fun as well. But I feel like there are just better options, especially when it comes to uh, the Soviets, um, in order to get your grind on. The T-55AM, for example, I think would be a better option. The IS-6 struggles from a lot of issues like the other Soviet heavies do. They just have long reloads, no gun depression, and it just kind of sucks to use the 122, especially against targets which have any armor. Luckily, you'll face a lot, a le a lot of leopards which won't have any armor, but at the same time, it is a little bit painful. I think, personally, I wouldn't pick this up um, just because of the uh, weakness of it and also my experiences in other Soviet heavies. The next one is the PGO-2. So the PGO-2 comes in at $10. Remember, the $10 packs, uh, they basically, uh, the vehicles themselves out of the packs cost $0.78. Cents. So if you think this thing is worth $0.78 cents to you, then there you go. Um, the PGO-2, once again, came in the game as seen as a monster. Um, it has a 
access to a Vulcan cannon uh, that, you know, is basically something that if you get within two kilometers of or one and a half kilometers of, it'll shred you incredibly quickly. But if you stay out of that range, dealing with the uh, dealing with the PGO2 is incredibly easy to do so. It doesn't have that much survivability. It doesn't really have that much of anything. And with the splitting of the tech trees, it has definitely lost some of its worth because you won't be able to research a lot of those uh, Japanese really good destroyers with it. You'll only be able to research the coastal stuff for the Japanese. The main uh, problem with the PGO2 is because of the splitting of those tech trees, basically you have a vehicle uh, which is really good against PT boats and really good against battle boats in a uh, small scenario, but a lot of people are actually just playing the destroyers. So therefore it gets up tiered, therefore it faces destroyers, and therefore it gets outranged, and therefore it is kind of useless. It can still cap a lot of points, it can still do really well, it's still a vehicle which is very, very powerful, and uh, can, you know, in close range combat, and annihilate pretty much anything that it finds. I just feel like uh, its usefulness is definitely degraded compared to when it was first released, when it was incredibly strong as a general vehicle. The next vehicle is the Prince Eugen, and the Prince Eugen, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a big boat. Um, it's a German heavy cruiser, you know, it's uh, one of the uh, one of the pay-to-win vehicles uh, when it comes to the game. It is just a better version than the standard Tech Tree Admiral Hipper, which it shares the class with, and I would definitely say it is worth it if you're looking to grind out high-tier naval uh, for Germany. You know, they're adding in battleships, they're adding in battle cruisers. This would be the time uh, to be able to get something like the Prince Eugen, just so you can get yourself uh, up there. It also has really good AA support. You know, it has access to some big old 203s as well, so you can do a ton of damage with it. And also the survivability is really nice on the Prince Eugen. It's pretty much your only option if you want to grind up and uh, use premiums to be able to get those larger ships. So you might as well pick it up, even though it's a pay-to-win vehicle and a blight on the game. The next vehicle is the P420 Spaviero, so this is just the Italian version of the PGO2. Instead of the um, Vulcan, it now has access to a 76mm. Now, this means that it can actually go up against destroyers and it can actually win. That 76mm is the same one you find on the automatic, and what you'll find is it's fast firing, it does a lot of damage, and as long as you can pick off components as you go, it's very very, very good. The only issue with the P420 Spaviero is the ammunition that you get. You don't actually get a ton of ammunition with it. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but when you have this fast firing gun and you're firing it a lot of the time, you know, especially against destroyers, which do take a lot of damage uh, to actually kill, you end up running out of ammo quite a lot, especially out of the autoloader. And um, the other thing as well is the survivability is once again very low compared to destroyers. They basically have to hit you once and you have to hit them five to ten times, which isn't uh, isn't the easiest thing to do, but still something that can be done. It also has HEVT, so you can take on air aircraft as well, which is always fun to do, and it does have a radar, so you can see when they're coming in. I had a good time in the P420 Spaviero. Um, I did play it though when it had like the, I suppose you call it mobility nerf, uh, where it was just sliding all over the place. <laughs> Luckily they fixed that recently. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun vehicle and it's good pretty much against anything. Uh, the only issue is it does get one tapped quite a lot. So you do have to understand that. Uh, the next vehicle is the Samua SM. It's kind of surprising to see the Samua SM already on uh, sale, but definitely a worthy pickup. The Samua is uh, the is the basically competitor to the AMX M4. It's got a lot of armor on it. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, engine on it, and also has the auto loader um, for the hundred millimeter gun. It has all of the nice aspects that you uh, hear talked about when it comes to French tanks. Uh, you know, the fact it has the auto loader, the oscillating turret. It has the extra 
extra armor. Everything is really nice on it. I've heard very glowing reviews of the Samu or SM. So if you're around that BR, you know, if you're around uh, that BR trying to, you know, push through it to get to high tiers for France, it might be worth picking this thing up to go with your already pretty good French lineups around that BR. It's nice to see the Samua um, on sale, uh, since it is a pretty new vehicle, and I definitely think it is a worthy pickup, just because I enjoy the playstyle, uh, you know, of those French tanks. The AMX M4 and the AMX 50 are very fun uh, vehicles to play, you know, you get to run around at decent speeds, donk people with a 100mm, and then also out-reload them because of that auto-loading system. It works incredibly well, and the AP that the French get really does pen quite a lot, uh, so therefore it's a yes from me. The next one that is on offer is the Object 120. The Object 120, the Tehran, is now on offer, and of course it is just a very fast, very nimble vehicle with a massive gun on it, the 120mm. This thing is designed for one purpose and one, pers one purpose only, firing APFSDS at the enemy at range to annihilate you. And uh, because it's at 7.7 .7 for some reason, it fits in that lineup I was talking before uh, with the IS-4M and also the T-54s, the ZSU-57 II with all of those boys. So it's an incredibly good vehicle uh, in order to do the, in, in order to add to those as a tank destroyer. It's very mobile, you can move around the battlefield very quickly with it, and you can get a ton of damage done with it if you, you know, if you uh, play it correctly. And because it has this APFSDS, even though it doesn't have a stabilizer, it is definitely able to dish out a ton of damage, um, and also, you know, just can't really fire on the move. But the idea of this machine is you get to like a camping spot early, you use your commander's view to have a look around the place. If you see anything you know then you pop out fire and then go back in because of your maneuverability and one of the only issues with this machine is uh, the fact that it, once after the five to ten minute mark once planes uh, start coming in you are a big target and people will come after you especially if you've killed them with <laughs> with your gun um, because of the fact that you are very lightly armored on the top so expect to die in this thing not from a tank but from a plane uh, so that's always going to be an issue. And also, it makes me sad to think that the PTZ-89 is literally a whole BR above this thing, but all it has access to is a stabilizer. It shows you how good the Object 120 is for the BR range it's in. Then you got the Magak 3. The Magak 3 is an interesting one. Um, it's basically just an M48 tank, which has been massively upgraded. Has a bunch of VRA on it, uh, which is, you know, really nice, even though the Blazer ERA isn't the best in the game. Definitely has its issues, but will stop certain HE and heat uh, from getting through. And uh, it can mean that you are survivable for that one shot, so therefore you can, uh, you know, hit the shot back. It does have access to the American 90. Um, uh, sorry, it has access to the 105mm gun, which, uh, you know, fires some really nice rounds uh, in the form of mainly just uh, heat FS. It also has a lower commander, so it's not as obvious where you're coming from. Uh, but generally, my thoughts on the M48 and M60 series of tanks, they are really horrible stock. They're terrible stock. But once they're upgraded, they're not too bad vehicles. You know, they get the engine power, they get the rounds that they have, you know, they get the survivability. And because the Magak 3 gets given to you spaded, it means that you don't have to go through that rough stock grind. You have ridiculous survivability with this thing, um, with the ERA, with the smoke grenades, you know, with the good gun. It generally works incredibly well. And being an American vehicle, you know for a fact that it has a lineup around it. So, so overall, it's a yes uh, from me. The next one is the Avery. So the Avery is a donk tonk. Um, it's a Centurion with access to a massive 165 millimeter caliber cannon. A lot of people swear by this vehicle. You know, a lot of people say it's great for grinding. It's a fun vehicle. It's not for me. Uh, <laughs> that's all I could really say. Uh, the Centurion Avery is uh, one of those vehicles that has a ton of ERA on the front of it. It's got a beautiful scoop as well. Uh, it's got some grenades, uh, so therefore it has that survivability. And it also has, as I said, the Donk Cannon. Um, it fires Hess shells. You know, Hesh always I've had a bad relationship with when it comes to War Thunder 
and uh, the majority of the time it doesn't work. Um, and uh, uh, with the Avery, I think even if it was a HE shell um, or even an AP shell, it would be better than the Hesh that is available. This is a fun tank. This is one to you know have a good time in. This is one to play with your friends and donk people with. But if you're looking for a vehicle to actually grind with, you know, pick up the Centurion Action X. It's a much better pick. And uh, even the uh, even the other one, uh, which is in the tech tree right now, which I can't remember, uh, would be much better than the Centurion Mark V Avery. This thing's a little bit of fun. Uh, don't pick it up if you want to seriously grind. Pick it up if you just want to have a little bit of fun with a Donk Tonk. Then you've got the Sabre Sky Blazers, the F86, uh, F35. Um, this is one of the older premiums now when it comes to the rank 5 premiums uh, for aircraft. I wouldn't be surprised if we see rank 7 uh, as an aircraft uh, thing next year when it comes to War Thunder. So um, I would probably hold off uh, from buying these things. Uh, just because of the fact that, um, just because of the fact that I, I've, I've got a feeling that rank seven is going to come. Um, so therefore, if these things stay rank five, even though they shouldn't, because like if you have a look at the L44 and the T55AM and stuff like that, they did move them up to rank six. Uh, so therefore, meaning that uh, they would still be as effective at grinding as before. But I've just got a, uh, you know, I've just got a feeling you might as well just wait. It's kind of interesting in the video as well that you can see on the right. They have left the uh, flame in uh, because it's such a an old video on it, which is kind of fun. Nowadays, the Sabre doesn't have that flame unless it has access to an afterburner like the F86K. This thing doesn't get access to an afterburner. Um, it's, you know, very similar to the F... Uh, 25 and F30, I believe it is, that we have in the tree. Uh, you know, it has 50 cows, it has access to some pretty nice bombs, uh, so it can be used as a CAS aircraft in ground forces. Um, but right now, there is a plague uh, which is going on in the game. It's called the Harrier, um, and also the A7. And uh, I don't think it would be very fun playing any 8.7s or 9.0s into that right now. So even though you may want to, you know, get this thing for grinding um, for those uh, American tech trees, what I would actually say is it's much better to like spade out a bunch of stuff like the F80s. The F80s are a lot of fun, you know, uh, the B57s as well. I would actually stick to tech tree grinding and stay away from that 9.7 to 8.7 bracket right now because it looks like hell on earth uh so um you'll just get chopped up especially by stuff like harriers you'll have to rely on your a7s and generally relying on teammates isn't the best the seahawk though the seahawk mark 100 since it's a slightly lower br than that bracket is always a little bit of fun it's one of the lowest br vehicles when it comes to uh, having air-to-air -air missiles in the game. Um, I recently spaded the British uh, Seahawk, uh, which doesn't get access to air-to-airs, but it does get access to the general, you know, flight characteristics of the Mark 100. It has really nice acceleration once you get the engine uh, upgrades. It has decent guns. You know, I've always been fine with the Hispano Mark 5s. I know a lot of people complain about them. As long as you use air targets, you're completely fine. You know, it works really well. And with access to two aim 9 b Sidewinders, it's a nice little addition on top of, you know, the, um, on top of what you get for armament and maneuverability with the plane. What it's also kind of interesting to think about is a lot of planes don't get missiles at this BR, but, uh, you do. And I feel like it's a nice little trainer to get you used to missiles and how they work. Since the M9Bs aren't great, but you're not facing a ton of aircraft which are able to actually maneuver away from them. Uh, so it can give you a nice little uh, look into how, you know, M9Bs work. And at the same time, uh, you can get access to some really nice bombs as well and really nice secondary armaments that aren't just M9Bs and uh, that means you're useful in air realistic and ground realistic too as a general plane. It's a fun one. Uh, I really enjoyed the British version and I'm sure I would enjoy the German version too.
the next vehicle is the Voto 2A. Uh, the Voto 2A is the Israeli um, version of the Voto. It gets access to some really nice air to wears, but you don't use this thing for its air to wears. Uh, what you do is you use this thing to uh, line up on bombs, and then you uh, go and bomb bases and turn off your brain, and that's how you grind through French the French air tree. There's a lot of uh, terrible French jets in the game. The Orugans, the uh, the Origon, the Barajon, uh, the MD 452s. You know the Super Mister. I've heard is good, but we'll see at some point. And I know a lot of people want to get to you know the Mirage. This would be a way to do it without having to think. Uh, you basically go and bomb bases. You don't think about anything else. You turn off your brain. You go listen to a podcast. You go listen to you know you go listen to a Twitch. You know um, you know maybe I'm streaming at some point, and then you just go and do that. You passively you know you passively grind and forget about the world. Um, that's that's what you do in this machine. Don't don't think it's like a uh, an air to air you know monster or anything like that it's just a bit of a speed demon at its br and it's a way to get yourself a ton of rp and sl by not doing anything and i would definitely recommend it even though it's probably not the funnest thing to fly one of the problems that the french tree has is it has a lot of really bad jets in it and you want to get past them uh, without spading them out to get to the good goodies the next one is the JASDF Sabre. This is the Japanese version of the, their premium Sabre. The difference is, is this gets access to AIM-9Bs. It also gets access to a higher BR. And uh, it still has the same issue that I talked about when it came to the Skyblazers one uh, with the rank thing. And also the fact that A7s and Harriers exist. And being uh, Japanese, you know, as a Japanese plane, you get the opportunity to fight both. Uh, so, yeah, I this is a definite no right now until they do some br balancing uh, when it comes to the game there's also quite a lot of really fun vehicles um, in the tech tree right now for the japanese a lot of rank 5 um, is really nice to play you know the kicker's not too bad the r2y2 is still in a good place uh, a lot of the propeller planes as well i think Generally, uh, there's a bunch of stuff which uh, is is a lot more fun to play right now than this, mainly because of the Harrier and the uh, the A70s. Then you got the G91 R4. This is the uh, one for Italy. Obviously, the German one is a GE vehicle. The Fiat G91 R4 uh, just got a buff recently, where now it can carry four um, four Nords. So it can't just carry you know four AIM-9Bs. It can also carry four Nords, whether they're AA or AS. So this is now useful in air realistic and also ground realistic. So if you're going to pick this up, understand that you can use it in multi of modes it does get access to 50 cows which at least i find fine for jet combat you know you're not going to do a ton of damage um, when it comes to them but it's more of like a, a niggling damage once a plane takes damage in jet combat they're normally done for anyway so the any damage you can do with the guns is always going to be nice and with four aim nine bs you can do uh, you can put uh, enemies in positions that they don't want to be in and i think generally that's a really nice you know scenario the fact that this thing is useful in every game mode is a big plus to it um you know once uh well even recently with some of the fleshing out of the italian ground tech tree with stuff like the leopard 1a5 being added it means that your r4 gets even more use there's a lot of really cool uh planes for uh for uh, Italy as well. Their whole plane aviation tree is very fun to play. So when it comes to something like the Fiat uh, G91 R4, I don't really think it's necessary to grind through. But if you want something that's useful in, you know, uh, pretty much everything, it's definitely worth a look at. And also half off, it's pretty cheap. And then you got the Shenyang F5. Uh, the Shenyang F5, obviously being uh, the MiG 17F. Uh, so it does have access to the afterburner. Does get access access to the PL2 air to wears which are very similar to the AIM-9Bs also gets access to the 137 and 223s this vehicle uh, the Shenyang F5 isn't exactly great 
um, when it comes to the meta right now. As I said, A7s and also the uh, wonderful Harriers exist. So good luck being bait. Um, it's also not great uh, when it comes to the ground realistic side of things. It's pretty much just an aerialistic monster and that's about it. I would wait for the BR, um, the BR balancing to come before playing this thing. Uh, then the next vehicle that is going on, the Saab Jenny J29D. So this vehicle is the Swedish uh, jet that you can get. It does have an afterburner, which is nice, and it also get a, uh, gets access to four 30mm cannons. The four 30mm cannons are actually really, really wonderful. Um, they are useful in air realistic and ground realistic. You can pen pretty much anything from the top, and uh, they do an absolute ton of damage. The only problem with this thing, doesn't get access to any missiles, only gets access to rockets, and those rockets can be very temperamental, meaning that they most of the time don't actually go towards where you aim them. Instead, some of them just shoot off randomly, uh, which is very, very odd. Uh, but I use this as a cast aircraft with my Swedish high tail lineups. The basic reason is because it's really good at taking out helicopters and also has the secondary role of annihilating ground units with its 30 millimeters. Uh, in air realistic, um, I played a lot of the tubs, uh, the bathtubs, which I call them, the J29s, and they don't feel great. Uh, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, they feel heavy, they feel chunky, they just feel like a fat saber. And I don't need a fat saber, uh, especially when facing stuff which is far superior to me. So overall, the J29D is definitely good in ground realistic. It's a little bit more suspect in air realistic then you got the hunter fga9 uh just by a harrier um it's much better than you at the same br uh so pretty much as simple as that uh the hunter fga9 you know has some nice 30s on it um it has some nice secondary bomb loads but they're not as good as the harrier it gets access to m9bs but they're not srams go by the harrier uh then you got the m the mig 17 as MiG-17 AS is once again Harrier and A7D food right now. Um, it once again has access to some pretty cool things such as air to missiles, has access to the 37, the 23s, you know the standard Soviet stuff. It's pretty much as simple as that. Um, it's very similar to the Sheng Yang um, overall. I think it's a pretty cool uh, machine. Uh, you know, I've fought them quite a lot. They have good energy retention uh, in general and also, you know, they have those 2250 kilo bombs. So if you're interested in being a ground striker, uh, it's much better to actually use other machines like the IL-28SH uh, than vehicles like this because they don't get a ton of ordnance. The next and last vehicle is the Cheese Wedge, the STRV-1030. This is also 50% off. Now, the Cheese Wedge is an interesting experience uh, in the game. <laughs> if, you've never, if you've never played the Cheese Wedge, um, I would say it's worth a go. There are two Tech Tree variants to give yourself a bit of a go with, but the STRV-1030 does actually fit really well in a 7-7 lineup that, you know, already exists with the Centurion and a few other things as well. Um, it does actually have some pretty nice armor on it. The fact that you have a really good reload on the gun is awesome. The only problem with it is if you ever meet a slight incline uh, when it comes to trying to aim the gun, you, you're done for. Like, it's as pretty much as that. If you're on flat ground or if you're being aggressive, it actually works pretty well. Um, but if you're doing anything when it comes to any type of angling, my god is this thing frustrating. Another thing to also say about the vehicle is it really likes uh, its transmissions setting on fire So and also the sides of the vehicle if you get shot even from the front uh, you'll set on fire so this thing will a lot of the time just burn out from FPE so even though it has the three crew members and can be operated by only one person the survivability can be lost uh, by just losing the transmission in the front or being set on fire three times which is very very annoying Overall, this vehicle, I actually had quite a lot of fun in it. The SDRVs are pretty nice once they're fully spaded. The problem is getting them fully spaded is a real issue. But since this is a premium, you don't have to worry about that. You get it spaded and you also get a pretty decent lineup around it. So overall, I would actually probably pick it up, weirdly enough. Uh, the That is it.
Um, <laughs> that is the last one uh, when it comes to the uh, the sales. There is a lot of them. There's a lot of stuff going on. And also, as I said, make sure to get involved in the tank football. Make sure to get involved in the other events going on. Uh, also, if you guys didn't know, there is, uh, for the New Year in War Thunder, there is a set of challenges which is out today, which is, of course, these ones. Again, the New Year Aerobatic Smoke, the Sparkler Snowman, and also New Year Tree. So make sure to check these out. Make sure to get these going on uh, alongside Operation winter there's a lot of stuff going on in war thunder right now and there's nothing wrong with that it's cool to see anyway i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time i'd just like to thank john ryman universe conte baraka e love goat trigger hippie eugens terry ambrosius mcclellan daniel stanton martinez b young and also hans fagellen sebastian mizon and samuel schlick for supporting the channel.